When it comes to resizing images in Laravel, every developer seems to have their own favorite way of doing it. Some developers prefer to use the Spassy Media Library, and others prefer to use commercial tools like ImageKit, ImageX, or Cloudinary. And then you have developers like me, who like to roll their own solution, which is exactly what I'll be talking about today. Before we dive in, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel, and then let's resize some images. In my multi-tenant food ordering app, we have an infrastructure that looks a little something like this. We have a load balancer with multiple application servers, and because we have multiple application servers, we use an S3 bucket to store our images in. We have a variety of frontends, and each of them have a different need when it comes to displaying images. So we needed a solution that was flexible, and most importantly, was able to dynamically resize images on the fly. We stored tens of millions of images and we didn't want to regenerate new images every time we needed a new format. That's where the AWS Dynamic Image Transformation template comes in handy. This template is freely available in the AWS Solutions Library and you can deploy it with a few clicks. The way this solution works is pretty simple. Whenever a request comes in, a function gets triggered that will look up the image in your S3 bucket. And in the request, you can pass your image transformations that will be applied using a node library called Sharp. The resulting image gets cached in the CloudFront CDN, so it's blazing fast. Most importantly, this is very cost efficient, so we can enjoy dynamically resized images at a fraction of the cost of other commercial solutions. Let's take a look at how we can set this up in a Laravel project. The first thing we need to do is deploy the AWS solution. You can find the link for it in the description below. When you visit the page, you can scroll down and click on launch in the AWS console. The first thing you need to do, and this is very important, is select the correct region. In my case, this is Europe Central 1. Next up, AWS is smart enough to pre-fill the solutions URL, so you can just click next. You can give this stack a name, for example, dynamic image transformation, this is fine. Then you can select yes, if you want more performance using S3 object lambda. We will enable course and I'll leave the origin as a wildcard. Then we need to fill out our source bucket. I already created one. Let's deploy our demo UI. Let's enable WebP and we can press next. We can scroll down and press acknowledge. We can click next. We can scroll down again and press submit. And now the stack will be created. I created a small demo project, which you can find linked in the description below. It's very basic, but it allows you to upload an image and do some basic transformations. First things first, let's make sure our environment variables are set up correctly. For uploading images on an S3 bucket, you have to set up an AWS access key and a secret key. You have to set up your default region, which in my case is EU Central 1. And you have to set up your bucket, which in my case is this one. Next up, you need to find your CloudFront URL. And when your CloudFormation stack has been completed, you can navigate to Outputs and you can find the API endpoint key and you can copy this and you can paste this here. Now, when we open up our project in the browser, we can upload the file, we can press Submit and here we'll see our original image. We can open the source image in a new tab and we'll see it's a very big image. Let's resize the image by specifying a width and the height and pressing Resize. And here we'll see our resized image. We can verify it's resized by opening up in a new tab and we'll see the image has been resized. Now let's guide our attention to the URL. This is a base64 encoded string that contains our modifications. Let's decode the string, format our JSON, and here we can see the payload that we sent to our Lambda. We specify our bucket, we specify the key, that means where the Lambda can find the image in the bucket. And finally, we specify our edits. And in this case, we want to resize the image. Now, you might think, how do we construct this payload? Well, I got you covered. If we dive into the images controller of our demo, we can see we use a resizer class. And this is a package I created you can simply pull into your project. The package is called Sabatino Serverless Image Handler. The resizer has some convenient methods to set the width, for example, 100. We can set the height. Now when we refresh, we can see the image has been scaled to 100 by 100. We can even turn the image grayscale and flip the image vertically or horizontally. And that's pretty cool. 
The Resizer class makes it very easy to interact with the AWS library, and the Resizer class will worry about encoding the parameters into a base64 encoded string for you. Very convenient. If we go back to our CloudFormation stack, we click on Output, we can also open the demo URL, and this demo URL shows you all the modifications that are available to you. We need to fill out our S3 bucket and a key, and then we can import an image. And in the editor, we can configure our transformations, for example, let's say 200, 200, resize, put cover or contain. If you press preview, we'll see our image being generated. We can update the fill color, for example, red. We can flip and flop. When we press preview, we'll see our image being generated. Very cool. All these transformations are available in my package. As you can see, this is pretty powerful stuff. And I can't stress the cost aspect enough. This is by far the cheapest solution I found to resize images dynamically, and I've been using it for many, many years without any issues. You can find my resizer package and the demo repository in the description below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you found this content helpful. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.